So today we are taking a look at not one, not two, but seven free plugins. They are by Kilohertz and normally they are part of a pack, but the seven plugins we take a look at today you can get for free. So let's take a look at what everything is about. My name is Matt Flank, let's get started. And now let's load all the plugins. I have a 3-band EQ, Chorus, Delay, Gain, a Limiter, something called Snap Heap, and then finally Stereo. Let's mute all of them for now, except for the first one, which is 3-band EQ. This is not gonna require too much explanation, it's a simple 3-band EQ. We have our low frequency gain, mid frequency gain and high frequency gain. On here we have a selector that allows us to randomize the current patch. We can create and save our own presets by entering a name and clicking the save icon or we can browse presets by using this icon and we can see different presets. Then we also have these vertical lines that we can drag to the left and the right to change the range of the low and high frequencies. As you can see, pretty straightforward. Now let's take a look at the next effect which is the chorus. And chorus also looks like this, as you can see all the plugins have a very similar look to them. In the top left corner we have an on off button and again we have the preset browser and randomizer. Then first we have the delay, then we have the depth, the rate. We have two or three taps which means the amount of chorus voices. Then the spread which will affect the stereo width and then a mix knob. Pretty cool, pretty straightforward again. Let's go to the next effect, which is the delay. Also with a very similar look, and this goes for all the plugins. On the top we have the on-off button of the plugin and the preset selector. And then we can set the delay time in milliseconds or we can sync it to our project tempo and then you can set the rate of the delay. Or in milliseconds. Then we have the feedback, which is how long it takes before the delay is faded out. If you set it to 100%, it will go on forever. If it's 0%, it will not even play one delay. Or it will actually play one in the case of this plugin. Then we can turn on or off ping pong. And what's pretty cool is if you hover over a knob or select one, it will show the explanation in the bottom. And we can also resize the plugin if it is too small and you can see it gets bigger. And then we have the duck. And when this is turned up, the output volume from the delay will automatically be lowered when the input volume is too high. Then we have the panning, which is straightforward again, and then the mix. Let's take a listen to some presets. Okay, so that's it for the delay. Now let's go on to the next effect, which is gain. And this is something that's pretty similar to the Ableton Utility, but it is just the gain. So we can set it in percentage or we can set it in decibel. And this is the kind of plugin that can really come in handy when you are mixing a song. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have recently made a video about three mixing tips, which will be up on your screen right now. 
and in there I explain three very useful mixing tips and one of them includes using this kind of plugin. So go watch that if you are interested in getting better mixes. Now for the next plugin which is the limiter, let's take a look. We have the threshold, the release, the input gain, the output gain and then a meter to display the current input level. And what's really cool is how the docking and the limiting of the sound is displayed visually. And instead of dragging this threshold, you can also drag this line up and down. And you can see once the input gain exceeds the threshold, limiting will be applied. And release is how long it takes for this limiting to be back up. Alright, that's a very basic limiter, but it does the job. Before we take a look at Snap Heap, let's first take a look at Stereo because this is a more simple plugin. We have the mid gain, which is basically the gain of the mono content. Then we have the width knob, which is the stereo width of the signal. And what's cool is it doesn't only allow you to go up to 200% like most plugins, but you can go up all the way to 600%. And then we have panning. And I again love how everything is made so clear with this very simple visual indicator. And then for the final and last plugin, which is Snap Heap. So Snap Heap is not really a plugin on its own, but it is a way to combine the previous plugins. As you can see, if I hover my mouse over here, I get this kind of window and I then can click it to load one of the kilohertz plugins. Let's load, for example, the stereo plugin. And now you can see I have this loaded on Serial Bus 1. And on this bus I can load some more plugins, for example the Chorus or the 3 band EQ. And I can basically go on like this. Let's delete these ones for now. And we can also change the order by just dragging it. And then we can mute or solo this bus or we can just turn it off altogether. On the bottom we have the gain, the panning and the mix of this serial bus and on the top we have some more additional controls. And as you can see when I play all these lanes and meters light up. If I load the plugin in the serial bus number 2 for example, let's say the delay, it will not be processed in a sequence. So first this will be processed and then the processed signal will go through the delay. But we can also run them in parallel by clicking this button and now bus 1 and bus 2 will run in parallel as you can see. Then we have macros which allows us to create custom combinations of macros like in an Ableton instrument track for example. I recently posted a video about the Ableton Live macro variations that are new in Live 11 so you can check out that video as well by clicking on the pop-up banner. And here we can map macros to custom knobs. You can see if I click the plus button, basically everything that this can be mapped to will receive a little plus icon. So let's say I want to map this to the spread of the chorus and to the width of the delay and to the width of the stereo. If I then click this knob again, it will stop the mapping. And now this is mapped and I can use both buttons at the same time. I can then adjust how much I can affect it by using these little circles. So I can basically set a maximum and a minimum threshold by using these to go into the positive or the negative range. Another feature is this little star icon that you see. And if I click this and I can click this, now I can adjust the range of both these knobs that I added to the star, which is a really nice feature. Let's delete this for now by double clicking on it and take a look at the LFOs, envelopes, pitch and MIDI. So first we have the LFOs. On here we have the phase from minus 180 to plus 180 degrees. Let's set it back to zero. Then on here we have the rate of the LFO, which we can adjust by adjusting the frequency 
or we can adjust by using the sync to sync it to our project BPM. And then here we can change the shape of the LFO. We have a sine, a triangle, a square, a saw, and then two noisy shapes. As you can see, there is also a plus indicator right there. And if we can, and if we click this, we can choose what the LFO will be affecting. So if I, for example, map it to the chorus delay time, now this will be controlled by the LFO one. If I click somewhere else again, and I can then choose the range to affect it. And you can see it now is starting to modulate. On here we have the depth, which is basically the dry wet, but for the LFO. Then here is the retrigger, which means the LFO will start all over again when I play a note. Then we have retrigger, gate and source, which go together. So this works a little bit different than other plugins that I have seen using LFOs before. So if we use the retrigger, when the input of the plugin, so when the input for this LFO exceeds the threshold of the gate, it will re-trigger the LFO. And in here we can select the source. So we can select an external source, the main or the note on. And then SNH holds the value of the LFO whenever the selected source hits your gate level. Then we have envelopes and envelopes are basically an LFO, but they play only once. They play when you play a key on your keyboard, as you can see. On the left here, I have a basic ADSR, which is very nice. But as you can see, it is gray right here and it didn't do anything when I used this. In order to use this, we have to change the mode of this envelope. Right now it is selected peak, but I can set it to RMS, which means root means square, but I'm going to set it to ADSR for now. And now you can see the ADSR comes available and the curve comes available as well. Then we have legato and we can again adjust the source and set the threshold of the gate. And then we have the pitch and here we can select the range in which it will, in which the plugins will affect my sound. So if I play outside this range, nothing will really happen. But if I play inside this, you see if there are some things that start to modulate. What you're hearing right now is actually the LFO because that is still mapped but I can map the pitch by using this plus icon. We can again change the gate and the source. We have the root note and the sensitivity. And you can see because it is mapped to the spread, you can see it change. And then lastly, we have MIDI on here. We have the pitch wheel, which at the moment is not mapped to anything. We have the mod wheel. So then we have our different input messages from the MIDI. We have the note, which indicates the key that I press. We have the velocity. It's the velocity at which I press this key. And the pressure is if you have a keyboard with aftertouch. So then finally, we have a preset browser on top right there. We can save our own presets by giving this a name and we can save them right there. There is also an undo and a redo button. So that is it for the Snap Heap plugin suite by Kilohertz. I think this is really cool and especially if you were to get the other plugins as well, you could make some really cool sounds with this. If you want to take a look at these plugins or download them or take a look at the paid version, the link to Kilohertz website will be in the description down below. Now I want to thank you guys for watching. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more videos by me, consider subscribing. I make videos about free plugins, making music, tutorials and more. My name is Matt Flank. Peace out.